We've already learned about exothermic and endothermic reactions where there's an exchange of energy, um, but we want to add a little bit more to the story about them. So um, a fire would be a good example of an exothermic reaction. It's giving off lots of energy, um, but a fire needs something to start it. You need some kind of spark, and that is some kind of energy to get that fire started. So I have to first put energy in, and then I can get energy out. Um, that's going to change our picture a little bit. So we're going to add energy in. There's my spark, and then I can get energy out of my exothermic reaction. And it turns out, if I looked at my endothermic reaction, um, I would see the same thing is true. Um, not only do I have to put energy in to an endothermic reaction, but I have to put more than I might originally think, and then I actually get a little bit back out as I turn into my products. So this space um, at the top of my graph here um, is going to be what we would call the transition state. Transition state shows up here, and that's um, the energy it takes to get an effective collision between two molecules, and you need that collision to get them to break bonds and form new ones. And so on the last um, slide, we had looked at the change in energy from reactants to products that was my change in energy. And over here, that change in energy was from reactants to products. But now we have another energy to add on here, and that's going to be our activation energy. So activation energy is the difference in energy between the reactants and the transition state. So I want to find my reactants. And I want to look at how much energy does it take to get up to the transition state. That would be my E sub A, or activation energy. Likewise, on the endothermic reaction over here, um, how much energy does it take to get from the reactants to the transition state? And that would be my activation energy. Um, as you look at these, does one look easier than the other? This, I would say, is easier because it takes less energy, and this is a larger amount of energy, so that would be a more difficult reaction um, to have happen. Um, so again, it's how much energy does it take to get to that transition state, and that transition state was an effective collision between um, molecules or atoms or whatever you're combining. Um, now, this is kind of difficult. Oh, so I have to give a spark or I have to give a lot of energy there. Um, and so one way that we can lower that activation energy is by using a catalyst. And so an example of that is drawn down here. Um, so so if we use a catalyst um, down here, this is a catalyst, I'll write a C on it. And the catalyst takes my substrate, that's my reactants, and it changes a little bit when the reactants come in and it basically stretches that connection between these two pieces. And so then it's able to break into products. Um, this makes it an easier reaction because I have this catalyst helping stretch and break things. And so what that looks like on my energy diagram is I get an alternate pathway um, where I still start at reactants and I still have to go up a hill, it still takes energy to do the reaction here and here, but it's a little bit easier reaction. And so the catalyst ends up giving me this lower activation energy and a lower energy pathway to get um, from one place to another. And you've got a definition of a catalyst over here on the side. Um, so that is um, a glimpse at activation energy, which was that energy from reactants to the transition state. It's that spark that you need before you start a fire. Um, and then a way to lower that activation energy is to use a catalyst.